Today we will be discussing remedies for respiratory illnesses, especially in the winter. Now, first of all, we should understand that why respiratory illnesses are so common in winter. That's very, very important to understand. So, the most important thing that comes to our mind is the air. So, in winter, the air is always very dense and that's the main reason why the problem occurs. <clears throat> so, when the air is dense, the bacteria, the virus, they get too much conglomerated, you know, and the air becomes quite thicker and the toxins and the noxious gases that emit from our environment stays within the environment for a pretty long time because of the low temperature. So that's very important. So lower the temperature, the air becomes more dense and that's why most of the population who are old, who are immunocompromised, who are young little children, whose immune system is not yet working very efficiently, these are the people who will be highly prone to develop uh, this kind of uh, problem. Most commonly is the allergy. So lots of allergy to pollens, to chemicals, to fumes, to odors. They crop up quite a lot. Then comes the viral infection. So viral infections are extremely notorious just after the autumn and very rarely you will see bacterial infection. Rhinovirus is one such common virus that you will see a lot in winter, especially affecting children, adults. Second is the influenza virus. Influenza virus is also another virus which can damage the children and the adults equally. Then comes the third variety of virus, what is known as respiratory syncytial virus. This usually affects infants and children less than 4 years of age. And the child will present with stuffy nose, running nose and the cough which is not subsiding for two to three weeks. And then one fine day you will get a noisy breathing with a very low grade fever. So this is typical of respiratory syncytial virus. Now what is the common pattern that you see in winter? Huh? So I am going to describe what I see in Bombay but I am sure it is true for any other countries. So the first symptom will be running nose as soon as you are exposed to cold or as soon as you are exposed to somebody who already has a cold because these viruses which I just mentioned respiratory syncytial virus, rhinovirus and influenza virus are highly infective. So first symptom is running nose and then you get cough and then mild lassitude, lethargy, body ache and then fever. The discharges can always vary from the nose either thick or thin, either white or green and then slowly, slowly you start coughing loudly and the cough is quite notorious. At this point if somebody takes allopathic medicine like antihistaminics or mucolytic agents, this is definitely going to ruin your illness and make it much more longer because it dries up your whole respiratory passages. In North America, people are being advised to go for influenza vaccine and people take this vaccination in the autumn so that in the winter they don't suffer from this. Believe me, vaccination does not help at all. In fact, it will lower down your immune system 
many people who have taken vaccination of course will have a lot of side effects of vaccination how will you differentiate a common cold from the influenza the most important thing is the muscle pain the muscle aches and many times in influenza you also get vomiting and diarrhea and there is a marked decrease in the appetite and you feel like sleeping all the time so that's another clinical difference between the two illnesses sometimes you also get a croup you know croup is also a viral infection where you get the typical sound while the child is coughing so this is all about the winter cold i am going to discuss now homeopathic approach homeopathic remedies and then finally i will also discuss something about the diet and home remedies which i use in my private practice so let's start with the materia medica now there are many remedies which can come in this whole field i have selected some from my practice now the first question is do we treat a cold with homeopathy my answer is as far as possible if somebody is on already on constitutional medicine do not treat the cold then what do we do should we allow our patient to suffer no give home remedies so for 2 to 3 days use home remedies if home remedies are not helping the child or a adult after 2 to 3 days and the symptoms are getting worse then only use a homeopathic remedy but if patient comes and says i am much better than i was 2 days back then there is no need of you to interfere in the normal treatment do you all follow so that's very important when to give and when not to give but suppose if somebody comes and says oh i get cold throughout the year then please don't treat the cold treat the constitution behind the cold and that's very important because getting cold throughout the year indicates a typical tubercular miasm hmm? recurrent tendency to catch cough and cold so something which happens very periodically recurrently chronically do not treat with some acute remedy here you need to tackle the constitution but let's say somebody who is very healthy does not get cold very easily and once in a while during epidemic or during season change or during winter he gets cough cold that's the time when you think of the remedies which i'll be discussing with you all today now one of the most important remedy in my practice is mirtus chickens now mirtus chickens is a remedy which we use in people who bring out lot of phlegm hmm? so that's very very important that people who bring out lot of phlegm and this phlegm is extremely copious sometimes can be prolonged and you can literally hear the sound you know that is coming out of the lungs so when you see something very loose in the lungs of the person and it's a winter season and bringing out copious expectoration every time he coughs he brings out sometimes it comes out very easily but sometimes it comes out you know with great difficulty to detach the cough in such a situation i think so mirtus chikan is one remedy that's extremely useful another remedy is myosotis symphyti folia now myosotis symphyti folia is a very very useful remedy described by hale now remember hale was one person who has introduced many remedies from native red indians from united states and that's why hale introduced colophyllum as you all know very well semisifuga if i'm not mistaken hale introduced this remedy he had a very deep knowledge of the medicines which native red indians were using in united states and this is one such more gift here again the expectoration is pretty profuse like mirtus chickens but there are night sweats and the left lower lung is typically affected the expectoration will be mucopurulent but here you will see lot of gagging 
gagging and vomiting during cough. Cough starts immediately after eating. Profuse expectoration in the morning. And the cold which goes to the lungs very easily. So in these two remedies that I just described to you, Mitter's chickens and myosotis, the phase of the nasal coriza and the running nose is too small and the cold immediately attacks the lungs or affects the bronchus tissue and producing early bronchitis. So that is very important. So cough eating after is very important in this condition. Gagging is important. And the whole background of the remedy is tubercular miasm or past history of tuberculosis, family history of tuberculosis. Then comes another remedy, balsam peru. Oh, this is a marvelous remedy. This is a remedy which I use for many conditions, not only for winter cough and cold. The first and the most important again is lot of cathar in the bronchus. You can, if you put your stethoscope, you will get loud rals, thick, creamy, yellowish sputa. Again, the night spreads. Again, a tubercular background. But the characteristic thing is irritation in the larynx, scraping sensation in the larynx, producing lot of dry cough. Producing lot of dry cough. Here, if you take an x-ray of these people, you will usually see bronchitis or bronchiectasis. The cough is usually worse in the evening and as I have told you, tubercular background. Then comes mentha pipaneta. Such a common kitchen remedy. Huh? Everybody has a mint in their house. Peppermint is one of the very useful herb used in the naturopathic medicine. Homeopathically, there is a persistent, dry, irritating cough by inhaling least cold air into the larynx, into the trachea, into the throat. Cough gets excited by tobacco smoke or smoke of any kind. So smoke and cough, tobacco and cough, and cold air and cough. These are the three important things. That's mentha pipanita. So if you are sitting in a restaurant where somebody is smoking and you start coughing especially in winter this can be affected very easily or somebody has kept a food which is piping hot and the fumes are coming from the food and you start coughing inhaling those fumes or you are exposed to the very low temperature and the cold air enters your larynx and starts producing coughing that these are the characteristics it's extremely close to another remedy Rumex crispus. Remember that. Many times you will give wrongly Rumex when the patient needs mentha pipernita. The characteristic difference is change of temperature. Remember in Rumex there is always a change of temperature. Rumex colds are characterized by violent sneezing worse evening and worse in the night and many times in Rumex you lose the voice from coughing. Huh? So these are the small differences between the two remedies because they resemble each other. Sometimes people who are in the singing professions, mentha pipernita becomes a very useful remedy. In my practice mentha pipernita and popular scan these are the two remedies by which I use for singers or people who have to talk, who need to talk, who need to use their voice. And after a lot of talking, the voice gets affected, becomes husky. Or if, especially if they have to read aloud something and then the dry cough comes. Mentha, Pipanita and Popular Skins are very useful remedies. So reading aloud producing cough in Mentha, Pipanita, singing aggravates in Mentha, Pipanita, Inhalation of the smoke aggravates in mentha pipernita. These are some of the unique symptoms of the remedy. Then comes ammoniacum gummi. What a lovely remedy that we have in homeopathy. Now ammoniacum gummi comes from what is known as an umbiliferi family. 
Most important over here is again profuse expectoration, loose cough, cold weather, winters and old people. So here for the very first time I am using a word old people. So anybody who is old and anybody who is exposed to cold weather, the first remedy you should think of is ammoniacum. The first symptom is tickling. There is so much tickling in the throat, but believe me, in the beginning, this tickling does not invite coughing. This tickling is then followed by a rough sensation in the throat. Slowly, slowly, the person will have difficulty in breathing, a sense of oppression, cannot breathe properly. There will be a little headache due to mild sinusitis. And there is a large accumulation of purulent matter. The mucus that one brings out from the throat or from the lung is very tough and hard, stringy, purulent, yellow. So these are the characteristics of ammoniacum. Then comes another remedy, antimonium sulfuretum auretum. Excellent remedy with people with weak lungs. Excellent remedy for people who have one lung. Excellent remedy for people who has got cancer of the lung and then gets a cold. Excellent remedy for people who have a weak heart and a weak lung. So weak heart, weak lung, cancer of the lung, old people, people only with one lung. These are the cases that will require antim self auretum during the winter colds. The cold has got profuse expectorations, lot of discharge with loss of smell from the nose, tickling in the larynx, difficult respiration. The cough is very hard. Now in myosotis it was the lower left lung, in entim self auratum it is the upper left lung. And if you don't treat this cold very easily, it goes and turns into pneumonia. So that is very, very important. That if you don't treat this very fast, it turns into what is known as pneumonia. You, I usually use it in a very, very low potency. If I have to use it in an old person with a very weak heart because higher potency, you know, can produce little aggravation. So you have to be little uh, careful. Many times you can also have little nose bleeds, you know, after washing the face. So in that way you should uh, give importance. Cocos cacti. This remedy should be kept in everybody's remedy kit for winter. This is a winter remedy, Cocos cacti. Everything is worse in the morning, especially on waking. So this is the grand important symptom of Cocos cacti. Morning, worse in the morning, lot of expectoration, profuse expectoration, profuse cathar. And another characteristic is that this is not only good for winter colds or winter cough, but also for whooping cough, also for croup. So cold air, cold weather, cold temperature, cold atmosphere, all aggravates. Very, very important remedy for whooping cough. The sensation which I consider very characteristic in Cocos Cacti is the tickling in the larynx. So that's the keynote symptoms. Tickling sensation wakes the person up and makes him cough incessantly, ultimately ending in vomiting of profuse mucus. So that's the keynote symptom. Hmm? Now remember, this symptom is very close to glonine because glonine has also got a feather-like sensation in the larynx and then he coughs. But the glonine aggravation is usually in the forenoon. So glonine has no aggravation in the early morning on waking. The second comparative materia medica for Cocos cacti is sanguinaria cadadensis. Even sanguinaria has got tickling sensation in the throat. But in sanguinaria, the sensation only comes when he lies down flat on the bed. But in Cocos cacti, it is in the morning waking on. 
the expectoration which a coccus cacti person will bring out is usually tough white viscid and the cough is worse in the morning between 6 a.m. and 7 a.m. Cough is worse in the night, lying down at night and better by drinking, better by warm. So these are the characteristic symptoms of a... You can look also at the rubrics, everything I have described. Sometimes brushing the teeth also aggravates the cough in Cocos Capti. Then comes another very important remedy, Rumex Crispus. Now, Rumex Crispus, remember, it's a good remedy, especially with those people who have a weak lung, a weak respiratory system after tuberculosis, family history of tuberculosis, past history of tuberculosis. This remedy usually comes to my rescue when many other winter remedies have failed to help my patient. The first characteristic is the harsh cough, the sound harsh, dry, tickling cough. But the most important thing that I see in my practice, I don't know how many of my assistants know, shaking the body. So when somebody is coughing <coughs> and the whole body is shaking, I know it's a case of Rumex. Rumex knows how to shake the body like Michael Jackson while coughing. Sensitivity of the patient to open air. Rumex person wants to glow, cover the nose with a handkerchief, cover the mouth with handkerchief, cover the throat with a scarf, cover the chest with a sweater, something very hot. They love to cover themselves because they are extremely chilly and if they cover they feel much much better. So that's another grand note of the remedy that is the sensitivity. Coughing spells usually produces fatigue, prostration. Sometimes the tickling is not only in the throat, but it goes as down as the sternum or behind the sternum. Now I'll tell you a very nice clinical hint of Romex and that is the tenderness not touching the clavicle during the cold or when he is hawking the mucus or when he is coughing, the patient sometimes shows the area of the clavicle as the most sensitive. Cough is always worse lying down and there is an intense tickling, hawking sensation in the throat. Usually night aggravation and midnight after aggravation. Sometimes the paroxysm of cough is so bad that you involuntarily pass the stool also. Urine also passes involuntary. But remember this clavicular pain is very very important. Now I will tell you Carol Dunham. Carol Dunham said that Romex is the best remedy which is affecting the mucous membrane of the larynx and trachea and making those mucous membrane extremely sensitive. So any sort of unusual inhalation or exhalation will affect the mucous membrane of larynx and trachea. And this was the observation of Carol Dunham. Read Dunham and Rumex and you will come to know what I am talking about. And this sensitivity of this part will produce long paroxysm of cough, uninterrupted paroxysms of cough, cough keeps on coming, there may not be enough modalities, but you very well know that there is a sensitivity of this part. Carol Dunham says, think of Rumex crispus. So don't lose this remedy. Then tuberculosis. So tuberculosis and cough, another very important thing. Another very important remedy which comes very close to Rumex when you cough, 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 cough. And there is a tubercular background, mephitis. Biggest difference, mephitis is extremely hot patient. In winter, he will not like to cover. Rumex is extremely chilly patient wants to cover the whole body with blanket. Now the concomitant symptom in Rumex is morning diarrhea. Dalkamara. Now Dalkamara is a definitely a big remedy but very useful. I was very surprised 
when once I opened a Fatak Materia Medica, and I read about Dalka Mara, where it was written Coriza in newborn and Coriza in infant. And I was quite uh, surprised that how does this particular symptom comes in Dalka Mara. It's a very nice remedy from Solanese family, which has a marked action on the respiratory sphere. What I see in Dalkamara cold is early paralysis. Now what paralysis? Paralysis of the throat, vocal cord and lungs. So that is very important. But here, remember, Dalkamara doesn't get affected by ordinary winter. Dalkamara needs cold and damp wet weather. So that's very important. First is the damp and then the cold weather and the second indication is very very common working in water in winter washing your hands in winter cleaning your utensils in winter taking a cold water bath in winter taking a little cold water in winter so working in water playing in water going into the swimming pool in winter going into the sea in the winter going into the lake in the winter working in water in winter that's dalka mara or staying in a house where the basement or the cellars are cold and damp living in a house where the basement or the cellars are damp and cold now what do we see discharges are white in the beginning from the nose later on turns yellowish and greenish and then forms thick crust and there are constant snuffles in the nose so as soon as they get exposed to cold weather snuffle comes up in a very big way Belkamara resembles antimony tart in a very big way because of the increased secretion of the mucous membrane Sometimes you also get catarrhal headache because of the winter colds in Dalkamara. And as soon as the running nose starts, the headache is ameliorated. Sometimes you get aggravation in the night in Dalkamara. But see, this is very common because in the night the temperature goes much more lower. And that's why because of the low temperature, the patient starts getting cough and cold. So worse in open air, wants the doors and windows to be closed. So better in a closed room. Dalkamara people are always better in a closed room. Sometimes the throat will be red and inflamed and tonsils may be enlarged. The next remedy of course will be Hepar Sulphur. Now Hepar Sulphur, as you all know, has got a marked ailments from cold weather, cold air. But Hepar Sulphur has got dry cold air, remember, and not like damp like Dalkamara. So whenever you have cold drinks, cold water, that's a very common remedy in my practice. Frozen food, ice cream, yogurts, frozen yogurts, everything frozen, cold water, cold drinks, drinking water from a cooler. These are the causes of cold of Hepar Sulphur can't bear cold air in any form and mark sensitivity huh? the sensitivity of a very high degree any exposure of the body part to the cold he starts getting running nose cough and cold so you are sitting on a cold pavement sitting on a cold chair sitting on a cold lying down on a cold bed that can also begin the cold Every blow of air, every draft of air will produce sneezing and running nose. Soreness in the throat as if there is a splinter, as if there is a fish bone. And remember better by warm. Better by hot drinks, better by warm air, better by warm covering. In Hippar Salt, the voice gets hoarse very fast. So you start with a cold and you get hoarse voice. Now some clinical things about Hippar Salt. So there are many patients of mine who develop a cold and then without asking me they take antihistaminic, without asking me they start antibiotics, without asking me they take some cough syrup and then they come to me. Ah, and they say, oh God, 
now I cannot even talk, now I cannot even speak, now I am coughing a lot, my running nose is much better after the tablet. These are the cases that will first go in the hands of HIPA itself. Because HIPA destroys the voice, HIPA destroys the larynx, HIPA destroys the vocal cord. And that's why all these things are happening. So putting the hand out of the bed, putting the leg out of the bed, foot out of the bed, you can also invite cold. Very important remedy for whooping cough and croup. For croup, Kalibai, Hepar Sulphur, Cocos Cacti are extremely useful remedy. The croup and whooping cough is usually worse in the morning and in the evening. Another important thing that gets affected in the cold of Hepar Sulphur is the ear, the middle ear which gets inflamed, infected and you get severe pain with offensive discharge which is yellow, bloody and purulent. Sometimes the eyes also get affected with the coal in a very similar way. Let me tell you something about the home remedies. Uh, so whenever somebody has a cold, the first thing that I tell person is to gargle. The gargling is either with hot water, which is plain, or sometimes I tell them to gargle with few drops of phytoleca berry, mother tincture. So I'll take 200 ml of hot water and 10 ml of phytoleca berry, mother tincture, and ask the person to gargle. Or I tell the person to mix turmeric and common salt in equal quantities. Take a half teaspoonful of that mixture and mix it in 200 ml of hot water and gargle 2 to 3 times a day. So that's very important. When there is a dry irritating cough, I tell the person to take 1 teaspoonful of ginger juice and one teaspoonful of honey mix it and take this mixture four to five times a day or i tell the person to take one teaspoonful of onion juice mixed with one teaspoonful of honey and that mixture has to be taken two times a day or i tell the person to take one teaspoonful of honey one teaspoonful of lime juice mix it Take, take it in a hot water and drink it as much as possible. I tell the people to inhale the steam that comes out from a boiling water to which eucalyptus oil has been added. That's very, very important. Sometimes I tell the person to take one or two drops of oregano oil in one teaspoonful of water and keep that water under your tongue. That's very important. Or I take a mixture of oregano oil, few drops, and olive oil, few drops, and rub on the person's forehead and nose. This will really help to open the block sinuses. Or few drops of oregano oil in a hot water and inhale the steam. Chewing three to four basil leaves before having breakfast, before going to bed at night, works wonder for stuffy nose. Sometimes I use black pepper powder. Take some black pepper powder and heat the black pepper powder in a pan for two minutes and inhale the fumes. That will open the clogged up nose. But the best Indian home remedy for clogged up nose is carom seeds. C-A-R-O-M. Carom seeds. So Roast the carom seeds on a pan and while it is hot, put it in a piece of cloth and then directly give fermentation to the nose, throat and the sinus area. The colds will be much, much better. So these are...